instead of being afraid and in fear, realize his time is soon. Amen? Amen. Father, thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for what you're doing right now in our hearts, Lord. Thank you for what you're doing in this group. Collectively and individually, Lord, we just want to open things up and let you, Father, work. Have your way, Lord. And be glorified in all we do today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And we all agree by saying, Amen. Amen. All right, you guys ready to worship? Ow! Abby's ready. If you can stand, go ahead and do that. And Lord, we just pray that you would just open our eyes, Father, to what's going on right now. Help us to get ready, Lord God. And for, for those that don't know you, Jesus, I pray that the right people would step into their path, Lord God, and speak the name of Jesus, that it would pierce the hearts of men, Lord God, and that we would just fall on our feet before you in worship. In Jesus' name. And 
took your name into the night then through the darkness your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul the work is finished the end is written oh Jesus Christ my living home who could imagine so great a mercy what heart could fathom such boundless grace the God of ages stepped down and 
Jesus way as simple as it sounds it's a choice that we make every day when people are being horrible to you at work John and you choose instead of backbiting and attacking them to pray for them to speak a soft word amen instead of a harsh word that might stir up anger might cause problems that's choosing the Jesus way 
We choose it with our families, with our friends, with our spouses. Huh, Pastor Johnny? At times, me, right? Ma, Molly will say, you, you're not being very preacher-like right now. And she's right. And i got to make better choices too every day, right? We all do. Thank God that the Holy Spirit doesn't stop dealing with this just because we have a title, right? We all need his unctions every day. But praise God, if we will follow his advice, it's just like a daddy that loves his kids. Life, relationships will be better. I'm not saying there won't be trouble in times. Amen, they're rough. But we'll get through them better than we would otherwise, right? Thank you, Lord, that your son came and he lived and he died. He also told us very clearly, in this life you're going to have junk going to have trouble we all do right every one of us but our God's faithful listen if you're dealing with something raise your hand come on we should all be raising our hands father we need your love your forgiveness your healing father your your protection your provision so Lord God we ask right now for all these needs we lift up Betty father who just lost a grandbaby She's crushed, Lord. She called me weeping like a baby. Lord, we pray for Patty, who's not here, Lord. Many other families right now, they're dealing with life's junk. Some are sick. There's even some still dealing with COVID, Andrew brought to our attention this morning. God, you're faithful. We lift these families up, Lord. We pray healing and wholeness, Lord. We pray that what the enemy's trying to use to destroy, that you would use instead to draw them to you, God to change their lives. Father, thank you that you answer healing, wholeness, Lord, forgiveness, Lord, body, mind, and spirit. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And we all agree by saying, come on, let's give him a clap. Praise his name. Thank you, Lord. I just want to remind us, sometimes we forget about this, but close your eyes and think about when you first met Jesus for the very first time and like how special that was for you and how, what a release that was from the world and all its junk. Let's go back to that moment. Let's worship God and remember how that feels. It should feel that way every day and I think we forget. We forget. So we have a couple more songs. If you want to stand, you can. If not, that's okay too. Let's just worship the Lord. I remember all I knew to do was sing your name. And I remember when all I longed to do was give you praise. Jesus lied.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Sometimes when we sing songs like this, it, it can be really easy to kind of get a little bit, especially if you're new in the Lord, sidetracked. Well, Pastor, it's saying I don't have any agenda. I don't have anything. I'm not asking for anything. You don't know me. What, what this song is really trying to tell us is, first and foremost, it's about relationship. If you abide in me, my words abide in you. Jesus said we can ask, and we should ask. You have not because you don't ask. But first and foremost, Jesus came to what? Show us how to live out the Father's will. I only do what he tells me. I only do what I ask. All of it flows through relationship. Imagine if I never talk to my wife, never compliment her, never do anything to help her, never cons even consider her concerns, but I go to her once in a while and just say, hey, I need you to do this. Right? God's on a slot machine. He loves us. And he didn't just talk the talk. He walks the walk. He's in his son. To show us. That's proof. Amen? But first and foremost, it's about relationship. Amen? Communion with our Father every day. He's so faithful. I love you guys. I'm excited about the testimonies I've already heard. If you're part of uh, Chelsea, 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 she was just telling me, she said, Pastor Rick, I had no idea that you guys stream everything on Wednesday night. I, I, I. She said, I've been going back. I've been learning so much. I've been doing a bunch of great, you know, we do. In fact, not, not any thanks to me. There are hundreds of sermons and lessons throughout the years online. We have a YouTube channel, New Beginnings Fellowship Lebanon, you can go to hundreds. you got to click on the video thing. And then um, if you're streaming live, you got to click live, right, on the YouTube. Uh, anyway, also New Beginnings Fellowship Facebook. I mentioned that because they told me to remind you guys to like and subscribe. Yes, it's part of the pastor verbiage nowadays. you got to like and, like and subscribe. Just like Jesus said, go tell your friends at the marketplace. And Paul did, right? Part of the reason we do that is when you like and subscribe, what it does is it starts an algorithm. And YouTube and all these other streams that we're involved with to restream, they go, hey, People are liking this. we got to spread this. And it's, it, it does work for us. I can't tell you how many people from Arizona, from here, from there. I watched your sermon today, and it affected me huge, Pastor Rick. And I say, praise God, all his glory. But when you like and subscribe, hey, it's kind of like spreading the word. Just a, at least a little bit, right? Amen. Hey, uh, speaking of that, I want to hear some testimonies. We've got just a couple minutes. Anybody want to share something the Lord did in their life this week? Come on, Vicki, I know you always got. Anybody? Come on, come on. Anybody? Maybe, maybe you just didn't have water for a while and you got water, or you got power, or whatever. You know, Abby's come up and said, Hey, I found this, or Mama bought me. I love those. It's the little things that make life. Amen. Come on, anybody? I'm Normally there's somebody. <laughs> Her and Danette been going out and, and spreading the word, and it's just been blessing my heart. Hold it up close. So a while back, I shared with you all that I recently, well, two years ago, I met a cousin that I did not know I even had and found out that he'd been a preacher um, during years back and had to leave the ministry to take care of his ill parents. So he sends me, it's called, I Hear Your Whisper, I Am the Glory Within. 
The dark, dark cloud you see on the horizon is a sign of mine coming. Many will point to the cloud and fear, but you will point to the cloud and praise. For you know that I come to bring joy, blessings, and righteousness. My kingdom will expand and grow as the children of the kingdom praise me. Heaven is waiting for the echo of praise to be heard on the earth. Even as my angels find their delight in singing my praises, so you find life and true identity when your praises echo the angelic sounds. Never allow the evil around you to dim the glory within you. I have created you for my praises. Let me hear the sound and see your glistening face as you seek me. Let me show you the battles I can win when you erupt in praise. Did I not instruct my servant Joshua to shout my praises? Did I not scatter the enemies of Israel when my people sing of my goodness and glory? Fix your eyes on heaven and gaze upon me. Enter in and you will find that I am all you need. I am the glory within. Psalms 149, 5, 6, the Passion Translation. His godly lovers triumph in the glory of God, and their joyful praises will rise even when others sleep. God's high and holy praises fill their mouths, for their shouted praises are their weapons of war. Thank you, Jesus. Their shouting the praises are their weapons of war. It reminds me of that Michael W. song, uh, what is it? This is how I fight my battles, even though I'm, uh, what is it? might look like I'm surrounded, but I am surrounded by you. And he's talking about surrounded by God and his holy angels. Amen. So anytime you're in the midst of the battle, just look up because God's right there with you in it. All right. Good morning. Glad to see everybody in God's house this morning. All right. We got our normally normal weekly events that's happening. We have women's Bible study at my house at 630 on Tuesday nights. Uh, and we also have the adult Bible study at Pastor Rick and Molly's house at 6.30 on Wednesday nights. And then we have the adult fellowship on Friday nights at Sodaville at 6.30. I'm really glad they're all at 6.30 because that makes it easy on me to announce them. So anyway, those events are happening. Tuesday, ladies Bible study. Wednesday, adult Bible study. And Friday night is just adult fellowship. Uh, if you want more information about the adult fellowship, see JD, see Vicki that was just up here. They have more information. And uh, also, coming up, we have Women's Teens Challenge uh, on the 22nd of this month. Is that, that's two Sundays away. It's two Sundays away. What I would like for you to do is just keep in prayer what God would have you donate to that ministry. We will be taking a love offering at the end of service for that ministry. So be praying about that. Also, on that same day, we are going to feed the ladies that come. And so we're going to be having a potluck. So think about what you can bring to complement like side dishes, you know, to complement chicken and tater salad, because that's what we decided on, right? Chicken and tater salad. So Molly says, I haven't announced desserts enough, so bring some desserts. But Daniel wants salads, so we need to bring salads. So bring, you know, try to complement each other, maybe work with one another. I think, are we going to do a sign-up? No? No? Sign-up? Just bring a side dish. Desserts, salads. If you feel like a sugar tooth, bring something sugary. If you feel like Rabbit food, bring rabbit food. Uh, <laughs> and, and a friend. The most important thing is we want to invite somebody to come to church so that we can feed them physically and then we can, that God can speak to their hearts spiritually and feed them that way. So anyway, that's the most important thing. That's really the only reason why we do potlucks is for fellowship here within the body, but to, is an outreach because people love to eat. They love to eat. I, I like to eat sometimes too much. Uh, also, we have, okay, oh, the adult fellowship. I forgot about this. The, the Friday night adult fellowship that is happening on Friday nights, they are going to have a fellowship on October 27th at 6.30, <laughs> same time, 6.30 to 8. And it's going to be at James Gang. Church is going to provide pizza, and I don't know what you guys' plans are, but if you want more information, again, see Vicky and see uh, JD back there. It might be games, might be darts, I don't know. Uh, but uh, it's going to be just a fun fellowship and pizza. Pizza is always good. I like pizza. Uh, also, all right, Ron keeps waving this, this clipboard. I didn't forget. I just wasn't there on the list yet. All right, we have men's retreat coming up on November 2nd through the 4th. 
It is a Thursday, Friday, Saturday. It's three days, two nights. Cost is $50. We have a sign-up sheet right back there that if you want to go, please sign up. If you don't know if you can go, please sign up. We want to get a head count of how many men desire to go. And if you can't afford to go, come see myself, come see Pastor Rick. We want to make sure that you go if you, even if you don't have the money, because it's not about the money. It's just trying to help cover some of the costs of the trip. But we want you to go because God does an amazing thing at those men's retreats in our hearts and one another and bonding together and want love. So anyway, we want you to be a part of that. So if you can go, that's November 2nd, 3rd, and 4th, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. All right. Now we're to what? That uh, is to be a... TBA, to be announced. We always drop the surprise the week before. It's because we, we have a budget, and then we try to email all these places to work within our budget, and then we wait till that response comes back because nobody wants to have an empty house. And so, you know, God always works it out that we get it in, within our budget or a few dollars here and there. So anyway, uh, that will be announced that we don't know yet. We could be going to the coast. We could be going to Central Oregon. Michael wants to go to Mount Hood. We'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, also, we are in October. We forgot to do this last week, but birthdays. I forgot last week, right? Was it on the list last week? Probably. No. Molly said no. But it, Hey, we, anybody who had an October birthday, I know my son has an October birthday. My sister's birthday was yesterday. Steve has an October birthday. Oh, look at him smile. Woo. You want to come up here and lead the singing, Steve? He's like, no, no, no. Uh, anybody else? We got Steve. Right there, and the name is again? Galilee. 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 Ooh, Pastor Hahnemann has a birthday coming up. And what's, what's your name? Okay, your name's Autumn. You want to come up here and help me sing? Would you like to do that, Autumn? All right. <laughs> Okay, on the count of three, we're going to sing. It's, it's Steve, Gally, and Autumn, and Pastor Hahnemann. All right, you think you remember that? Here we go. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Good job, good job. Ushers, come on forward to give you the opportunity to give in the offering this morning. Father God, we just thank you for that. We can come into your house and we can worship you freely where we live, Father God. I pray that you just bless this offering. I pray that you grow this offering. Father God, give us, give us the direction you want this money to go in, Father God. Lead and guide us. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said? All right, after the offering comes around, we're going to give you five minutes to use the restroom, bump a fist, hug a neck, grab some coffee, cookies, and we have Kids Church Kids.
Hey, y'all, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you early, find your seats when you get a chance. I got, I got shorter time than normal. I got to get through this hour and a half in, in uh, 35 minutes. Our God is so faithful. Some of you maybe that haven't been here regularly, you're like, I never seen a church take a break after worship. Well, I, 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 I didn't like it when we sat for an hour and a half, two hours in many of these services, and I spent most of my time doing this in the last 10 minutes because I, I couldn't concentrate. And I'm okay. You know what? If you look at what really happened when they met in the Bible, sometimes they would travel far and near and they would stay all day and they'd eat and they'd fellowship and they'd sing and they'd tell poems and sing hymns and songs. Amen. It was about coming together. Sometimes we make it so ritualistic. We have all these things. Oh, it's got to be just like this. Hey, how many know the times we really commune with our Father? is when we're working. You know what? I tell people, the Bible tells us, not in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, that Noah was a preacher of righteousness. He preached for a hundred years. And I believe he was warm and telling them about the flood and everything, right? But how many know the Bible also says he was working his tail off building a big boat? Sometimes the places we meet our God is just doing our everyday stuff, and it should be. Amen? Not that we don't need to get away in our quiet time. But what I'm saying is we can get so caught up in this stuff and how it's got to be done. The ordinances and just how the ritual's got to flow. Amen? I want you to be able to sit here and, and be relaxed. Not be worried about your bladder. <laughs> Father, thank you so much that you're here right now. That you're working in this group of people. Me included, Lord. You gave me something to speak this week, and Lord, I pray, help me to speak your words, not my words. And help us, Lord, to receive online. Help us to receive sitting right here. And leave here today changed by your power. And Father, help us to not just be hearers, but help us to walk out of here and be doers. In the precious name of Jesus. We all agree by saying? Amen. 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 So we've been preaching through a series that I entitled Love. This is the second sermon of the series, and, and it's entitled Let's Protect Our Love. Sorry you can't see that better. One of these days we're going to figure out how to shut off that big light coming in. Well, that's the sun. We can't do that. Right? We started this series a week ago, and we start by telling each other and the Lord by declaring that love is a choice. Love's a choice. Love is something that we choose to live or not to live out every day. It's a practice. Amen? Something that we choose to practice or not to practice every day. How many know the word commands us to love our Lord, our God, with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and our neighbor as ourselves? The word of God tells us, husbands or wives, love your spouse as Christ loved the church and gave himself 
for it. Love isn't something that we fall in and out of like Hollywood would like us to believe. Love is something that we choose every day. And so we talked about the fact that love needs to be expressed. And last week we started talking about four ways that you and I can choose to express our love. We said the number one way we express our love is verbally. God's a speaking spirit. And he's been speaking his love towards us since before the beginning. Amen? God is a speaking spirit and he created us in his image and we're speaking spirits. The Bible tells us that one of the ways that we're to share our love is verbally. I need to tell my lady she's loved. In fact, we looked at Proverbs 31 a little different. We use that often. Hey, this is a virtuous woman. But at the end of that text, it says, and the children rise up and they bless her. And the husband praises her in front of the children. One of the things that we don't do that we should do is verbalize our love. You know what? You want to affect the world? Tell a perfect stranger that you love them. Well, but pastor, what if I don't? Then let the Lord change your heart. Does God love that stranger? And aren't you his child? Aren't you part of the kingdom? Love's a choice. See, you're thinking like Hollywood. It's not about a feeling. It's a choice that I make every day. I love you. If you see your brother in need and you have the ability to help, and you don't, then you stop that flow. Amen? It's a choice. Verbally, we express our love. Secondly, we express our love through actions. We know words are, right, not effective if the actions are not there. I told you, you know what? I tell my lady I love her, but you know how I express my love? She comes home and the washing's done. The towels are folded. I even ran the electronic vacuum cleaner. The dinner's laid out. How many know she feels love? Don't get me wrong. Roses and all that stuff, that's also part. Okay, so we express our love not just in word, but in deed, the Bible says. Let's not just love in word, but in deed. Thirdly, we express our love by setting aside intimate time, focus time. Amen? It's important. These all apply to our relationships all around us in work, in play, in life, but also to our God. We, we express our love most importantly, I said last week, by loving our God, putting him at the center of everything we do. Whether your wives realize it or not, the best way you can express your love to this family, to everyone around you, is by truly giving of yourself completely to the Lord God and loving him with all you have. Because the Bible tells us the natural outflow of that is to love your neighbor as yourself. But it comes by loving him with all my heart. Amen? Does that make sense? By staying plugged into the vine. So today, we're going to talk about the fact that love needs protecting. He's protected. As the Lord God, by the Holy Spirit, starts to form love relationships in us, just like seedlings Baby plants, these love relationships must be nurtured and protected. Imagine a newly wedded couple. Man, they're moving forward in life. They're both working. They love each other in the Lord God. They've set goals. They, they're going to buy a home. They're going to start a family. And above all, they're going to love the Lord God with all their heart and everything they do. The husband's working at a place that's very ungodly very worldly, and they're putting in a lot of hours. And so I've been there, done that. All the buddies and friends around start barring him. Hey, man, we just put in 60. Let's go down and hit the bar and have a few drinks and relax. But inside, something triggers and says, no, I shouldn't do that. 
uh, you know, I've had trouble with that junk in the past, and, you know, uh, no, no, no. Plus, I know my lady wouldn't be okay with that, too. He tells him, no, I thank you, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go home and, you know, take care of business at home. And, of course, all the guys do what they do, right? They razz him. You need to set her straight. She's got you wrapped around her little finger. You need to tell her who the boss is. How many heard this? We all have, right? But he says, I thank you, but instead I, I'm going to go home and do what I should be doing. Now, in making those choices, what's he doing? He's protecting his love relationships. As I began to study God's word, what I saw was God has given us commandments, especially the Ten Commandments, not just to give us more rules and regulations, but because he loves us enough to help us, to protect us in our love relationships. When I go through Christian pre-counseling and marriage counseling, I tell the, 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 the children, most of the time they're children, <laughs> the youngins I'm counseling, sometimes old ones, hey, that God gave us a set of standards to protect our love relationships. And it's called the Ten Commandments. And then I start explaining what I mean by that. And light bulbs begin to come on. And when they do, it just blesses my heart. Recently, I watched a video. And um, a person went out. And they were talking to high school and college age students. And they asked him, hey, can you name 10 different brands of beer? And almost all of them could. Red Rock and Bud. and uh, They were going through all these different ones. Hams and whatever. I don't even know if hams are still being produced. But they went through and they, they could name these 10 brands of beer. But when they asked them if they could quote the Ten Commandments, most of them couldn't. I want you to know as Christians that should concern us. That should concern us. Because what I truly believe is then when, when we start losing sight of the Ten Commandments, all of society begins to break down. Some of you are thinking, Pastor, you're kind of sounding legalistic. No, I'm just stating fact. Once again, when we stop practicing the Ten Commandments, at least nine of them for sure, I believe all society starts to break down. See, God gave us these commandments as a boundary, again, to protect us. Imagine that you have a young child, like I have a little three-year-old grandbaby, Stevie. And she's playing. We're at some park. Molly and I like to go to the Thousand Trails Park. And I notice and she's getting a little close to that edge of the cliff. Now maybe, and, and, and I don't take the time to quit playing my video game. I never play video games, but I'm just trying to relate to y'all. Some of you do. I don't. But I don't take the time to stop playing my video game to set some loving boundaries. Am I doing good parenting or bad parenting? Bad parenting, see? We think that God has given us these rules because he just wants to be a taskmaster. But it's because he loves us. See, a, a parent that just lets his kid just do anything they want, what will happen is you're going to end up with a kid that's dead. Or at the very least, hurt and unhealthy. They're going to want to eat candy and play on the highway. Or they might just end up totally spoiled, rotten. Our Father God gave us the Ten Commandments to protect us, to school us, to teach us about how to love God and love each other. But I never want you to take my word for it. Let's prove it. Let's look at some things that God showed me years ago, and, and then he just built on it. Jesus, in Matthew 22, 37 through 40, when he's talking to the lawyer, look at what he says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang 
all the law and the prophets. And I remember I read that phrase one day and it just rang into my heart. And I asked myself, what is he saying? What did he mean by that statement? And so I began a study session. Molly will tell you sometimes they last weeks where I just dig in and dig in and dig in, read commentary, right? Uh, you know, try to get on my knees, just dig into God's word. I'll look at 10 different versions and I go into the Greek and the Hebrew and I, I try to find. Finally, I believe what the Lord showed me was this. Jesus was saying, every prophet that has ever been given to you, Every message and commandment that was ever given to you was to teach you how to love the Lord your God and your fellow man and to protect those love relationships. So my number one point is God gave us the Ten Commandments to protect our love relationships. Let me give you another proof scripture. 1 Timothy 1.5 says, Now the purpose of the commandment is love from a pure heart, from a God conscious, amen, from a sincere faith. When I'm doing premarital counseling again, I share this with these young people and I pull up the Ten Commandments and often they just go, what? And I say, let me show you how the Ten Commandments can protect your love relationship. Go back to that Ten Commandments slide, would you, brothers? Let's look at the first commandment. Don't have another God before me. Imagine you start into a love relationship. And then you start to allow something to come between you and your lady other than God. Let's say football starts being the priority. Or hunting. Or hanging out with your buddy. They become the focus of your attention, or it does. What do you think that's going to do to your love relationship? Amen? His too. Let's go to number seven. Don't commit adultery. You think if I start committing adultery, that might affect my relationship with my lady? Is God telling me that just to give me another rule? He's trying to protect my love relationship. And I can commit adultery without ever touching somebody else. Right here. Right here. If you look at someone to lust after them, Jesus said, you've already. You're already. Amen? Number six, don't commit murder. You think if I, I do joke about this with my lady now and then. I started the hole out back. <laughs> Kevin's laughing. <laughs> You're late. Hey, hey, you know, I, I told everybody the other day I was trying to work under my mother home, and I'll be honest, I never said a word, but I thought a couple of cuss words, man, it hurt a couple of times. I'm just saying we all deal with junk, amen? But listen, you think if I murdered somebody, it might affect my relationship with them, yeah, right? Well, Jesus said if you're hateful towards somebody, it's the same as murdering. Why did he tell us that, Joe? Was it just to give us another rule? No, because he wanted your love relationships to be protected. And so he said, don't start being hateful and bitter towards your lady. If you don't deal with it, then it'll build up and it will become this huge thing between you and her. Or you and somebody at work. Or you and somebody, amen, your neighbor. He gave us these commandments to protect our love. Number four, don't forget church. Don't forget church. It's the one commandment that many theologians believe didn't transfer into the New Testament, keeping the Sabbath. But Paul said, hey, we need to have a day, right? And don't get me wrong, I'm not picking on the seventh day. I'm saying... What's important is you and I take a day every week and we rest from our work. 
and instead we give it to the Lord and our family and friends and fellow Christians and brothers and we come together and we enter into his rest. Amen? It's important. If I don't do that with my lady, you guys know, hey, we just get out of here. And we've done it ever since we've been together. We set aside time. And sometimes the elders want to do stuff. And I say, no. Why are you doing it? What? what, what, what? But we want, no. I ain't doing it. You know why? Because this lady doesn't know how to say no. But I figured out how to do it. Because I realized I was a burnout pastor. Because I could never say no to people. But I realized as I looked in the scripture and studied them that all the apostles and Jesus said no a lot. Nope, today I got to go and be alone with my father. Amen? I can't be the man I'm called to be and I can't maintain the love I have with this lady if I don't set aside time. Amen? Regularly. To keep that love alive. Same with our God. I need time, don't I, Roy? Amen? He gave us these rules, see, to protect our love relationships and to help them to grow. Again, let's apply these to God. The Bible tells us that we shouldn't use God's name as a curse word. That would be another way of saying blaspheme. We shouldn't steal. We shouldn't neglect our time with him. Do you think that any of those might affect our love relationship in a negative way? Sure, they would. Father God didn't give us the big ten to control us or burden us with, the rule, with more rules and regulation. He gave us the ten commandments because he loves us so much. And he desires to have a healthy Love relationship with us. So for the rest of this sermon, the next 15 minutes, I'm going to focus on one that I believe is rampant in our society right now. And it's destroying our society. You remember at the start of this, I said, if we start neglecting the Ten Commandments, all society will break down. That's what I said. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. The Ninth Commandment is don't lie. It says, don't bear false witness. Don't say, I saw him do that. I know he, hey, and I da 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 when you didn't. Hey, don't lie. We've all heard the little statement, or the statement, hey, a little white lie doesn't hurt a thing. And I want to declare to you right now that that's an absolute lie. And it's from the father of lies. So point number two is, When we accept lying is okay, all of society begins to break down. I want to start by showing us, first of all, that Jesus declared that we're to tell truth. Look at Matthew 5, 33 through 37. Jesus said, again, you have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not swear falsely, but shall perform your oaths to the Lord. But I say to you, do not swear at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king, nor shall you swell, swear by your head, because you, you can't make one hair white or black. How, wouldn't that be nice? Black. Brown. That'd save you ladies a lot of work. But let your yes be yes and your no be no. For whatever is more of these is from the evil one. Back in Jesus' day, people would lie, and they doubled down by swearing. Well, yeah, you don't believe me? I swear by that donkey out there. Well, you don't believe me? I swear by that chariot and that black stallion. Well, I I swear by that big old fancy house up there on the hill. I swear by the temple. I swear by the gold in the temple. And it's like if it was a bigger swear, it was more proof that it was telling us. And Jesus said, quit all this junk and just let your yes be yes and your no be no. He said, stop it. Just tell the truth. Keep your word. Amen? 
It protects our love relationships. If you doubt that, just start lying to your loved ones and find out what happens when they find out you've been lying to them. You think that'll maybe affect your relationships in a negative way? Strike that. Back up. Don't start lying to your loved ones. <laughs> it was a, you know, rhetorical thing. I, I, I didn't mean it. <laughs> don't, don't start lying to them. All right. <laughs> what I'm saying is if we start lying to those around us and then the truth comes out, is that going to affect our relationships in a negative way? Sure it is. I made the statement earlier that if we accept lying, it's okay. If everybody starts to do it, so it's just okay, which is what the Bible says is going to happen at the end, that all society begins to break down. But let's look at this a little closer. Imagine that the government starts lying to us. It's hard to imagine that. Isn't it? No, that's a... <laughs> what would happen? We would lose faith in our government. We would quit trusting and believing it. And if it went on long enough, there'd be a revolt. Hey, what's going on worldwide? Does anybody trust or believe their politicians anymore? See what Lion has done? What would happen if our local leaders and agencies started lying to us? If we couldn't trust the police or the firemen or 911? That guy thinks we're coming. <laughs> What would it do to our society? What if your boss lied to you about paying you? You put in your 40 hours and then, J.D., you wouldn't have a check. Would you keep going to work? You wouldn't, would you? All of society would begin to break down. How about the marriage vows? If we quit keeping our word for better, for worse, for richer, or poorer, do you know that's what's going on? All society's breaking down as far as marriage. Right now, marriage is at a 55% divorce rate. And listen, our young people are losing faith in marriage. But those of us who are staying married, it's a testament to those around us. I'm telling you, I know what it's like to have a good, godly, loving relationship. And there's nothing better. Amen? It takes a lot of work, though, doesn't it, baby? I want you to see what I'm saying. When we start lying or accepting lying as okay, when we don't keep our word in our society, Vicki, all of society starts to break down. All of it starts to come apart. And I'm sad to say, but I can't tell you how many 20 to 30-something-year-olds I have talked to that do not keep their words. I have got commitments about coming to church. I've even got commitments about working for me. And they show up one day, don't come back the next, or they never show up to church. It breaks my heart. Am I saying all 20 and 30 years don't keep their word? No. I'm saying, unfortunately, it's an epidemic in our country. When I was a kid, Pastor Hahnemann, you gave your word and you kept it. That's how it was. That's what a man did. You kept your word. In fact, there was a lot less written contracts, huh, Mama? You gave your word. You shook your hand. And you know what? My parents would tell me, don't you dare give your word without thinking it through. Because if you give your word... You're going to keep it. You tell that farmer you'll be there all summer and he can count on you to move that pipe. You're going to do her and I'll get your tail in up and kick your tail if you don't go. Because you gave your word. Amen? That's one of the things that built this country. And now people are trying to figure out how can I make these big agreements and then learn how to break them through the law so that I don't have to keep them. And it's killing our country. Amen? It's killing our country. God gave us these laws because he loves us. Jesus said, don't say yes. Don't give your word. Don't commit to something and not do what you say. Psalms 15.4 says that God despises a vile person, but honors those who fear the Lord, who keeps an oath even when it hurts 
and does not change their mind. There's been times that I've made agreements, and you know what? The next time I made the agreement, huh, Ron, as a contractor, I changed it. Because I realized I can't paint, replace all the siding, and do that whole edge there and finish that all up for 3000 bucks. Because it cost me 4200 just for materials. Kevin's shaking his head. But I kept my word because I gave him my word. Amen? That's what the Bible says. When we allow our kids to lie and get away with it. We do an injustice. Oh, I'm just being loving. No. Love protects love. God is not a liar. Who's the liar? Who's the father of lies? Satan. God is the very epitome of truth. I'm not saying we never show any mercy. My dad was this way. If I find out you did thus and so... You're going to get a spanking, or you're, there's going to be some penalty. But I find out you lied, he's going to double, right? Because he was trying to teach us to tell the truth, to always be a truth teller. It's so important. People don't realize God hates lies. Look at Revelations 8. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all what? Liars. Liars. Shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. God hates lying. Look at Proverbs 12, 22. Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but those who deal truthfully are his delight. I love the second part. I'm not trying to condemn us this morning, but I would not be doing my job as a pastor if I didn't preach what Father God had placed on my heart this week. My third point is, it's just simple. If you've been lying, if you've been making commitments and not keeping them, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Well, Pastor, you don't understand. It's hard to tell the truth. No, it's not. You're believing a lie. It's not hard. Look at Paul talking to new Christians in Ephesians 4.22. That you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the seedfulness of lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. That's the first step, amen. We've got to let him change our stinking thinking. And that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, he's saying as an example, putting away lying. Let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor. For we are members of one another. When we lie, it hurts the body of Christ. And as a Christian, it gives our Savior a bad rap. Rep. Amen? Things that are not possible with man are possible with God. Who strengthens us, empowers us. If we'll confess our sin, if we'll turn from our sin, he's faithful and he's just to forgive us. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And Romans 8 tells us that there's therefore no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. Who did not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit. What's the telltale sign that we're in Christ Jesus? We're not walking according to the flesh. We're walking according to the spirit. I'm not saying that a lot of what Paul's preaching is to Christians living carnally. It is. But he's not saying it's okay. He's saying we can do better by his power and grace. Amen. Not on our own. But if we will abide in him. If we will press in. Spend time, get godly counseling. Amen. We need different examples sometimes. We need to not hang around with people. Corrupt company corrupts. Instead, change our friends. Amen. Instead, be more involved in church and in Bible study and in our word and on our knees. Listen, God will give us the ability and grace to do what he's commanded. Because he wants us to protect our love. Amen. 
change your mind. Start to live righteously, to think righteously by his grace and power. By filling our hearts with his word. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. Look at this proof text. 1 John 3, 7. Little children, let no one deceive you. Remember what Jesus said? And I've told you over and over. The greatest sign that we're in the last days is deception. It will be every place. Jesus five times in Matthew 24. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. Even the elect. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. Let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous. Just like he is righteous. Yes, we need to perfect holiness. Come on, baby. In the fear of God. It is a lifelong practice and endeavor. But listen, we can do it. God's given us his love. He's also told us to protect that love by letting him change how we speak, what we do and say. Amen? You receive it? Yeah. Praise your Lord. Come on, sweetie. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord God, for this word, Lord God, in order for us to protect our first love, Lord God. Help us just to come to you, confess our sins, Lord God, and change our ways, Lord, that we would be able to just come back to that first love. Remember why we chose you. Remember why you created um, this whole earth. It was just, Lord, so that we could be with you, be your children, Lord God, and help us to be a good example to our friends and family too, Lord God, and come back to that first love. I remember when all I knew to do was sing your name.
God, we just want to fall back in love with you. Father God, if we're sitting here this morning, we lost that first love by our Father God. I pray that you help us to seek you and to long after you and to desire after you, Father God, to receive that fire again. Help us just to seek you every minute, every hour of every day, Father God, that we may be in the path that you want us to be in. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Next week, Lord willing, we're going to talk about how to resolve conflict. I've had a lot of people come to me and say, Pastor, and we got this going on between me and so-and-so. Does the Bible give me some parameters of how to deal with conflict? Love you guys. <laughs>